What's up? Well, don't let it worry you. Just keep your eyes open. Masters are not very pleased with you. <laughs> Do you know what I think? You think? I think you're up to hearing it. The word from control is no. But he promised. How long have you been in this business? What does a promise mean? I was told if I wasn't happy with the setup, I could pull out. You're not thinking of going to the other side. I don't wish to play the heavy. Not my style. But if you persist in this negative attitude, It'll then result in my having to call in our contract people. Is that a threat? Take it whichever way you wish. Ask me, old chap. I think you're being rather... silly. It's my career that's at stake. You can't make me do it. I believe we can. Organization's too big for you. You'll just have to go through with it. You. By the way, to do to you lot to get you here. <laughs> See, Mrs. Thatcher's cuts have reached the BBC. <laughs> what? It's for the whole of the show? <laughs> well, always bring my own. <laughs> Another thing about drinking on television, people are fascinated to know what is in the glass. They're always asking me, I say, well, what's in the glass? Is it whiskey, gin, vodka, rum, brandy? Yes. <laughs> we are, as you might know, we are in the middle of the Christmas holiday. 
And I'm only telling you that because there might be somebody out there who has somehow managed to miss all the ballyhoo about Christmas that started in October. <laughs> it is, have you thought about what an extraordinary season Christmas is? Totally sane, normal people will rush off into the countryside and, and tear down holly trees, <laughs> rip them asunder, grab great armfuls of ivy, climb to perilous heights to grab a piece of mistletoe. For a month before the Christmas, the whole nation is walking around with trees under their arms. <laughs> in cars, over the sh and nobody is surprised. This is it. I mean, what for? When you think we bring a 12-foot tree into our sitting room <laughs> to decorate it. And the whole family sits there and say, oh, that tree looks lovely. <laughs> you try doing it in July. They say, what that bloody tree doing? How does, how does a custom like Christmas trees even begin? I mean, when you think it began, it, some fellow walking around with a tree, and somebody said, where are you going with the tree? He said, I'm taking it home. So what are you going to do, burn it? I'm going to put it in the room. You are? Yeah. And now I'm going to cover it in tinsel and, and lots of little glass balls. <laughs> chocolate figures. And I have this brilliant idea of putting a fairy right up the top of it. And nobody says, you're a bloody lunatic. <laughs> they all say, that's a great idea. Let me, I'll, 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 I'll do it. And turkeys, 12 months of the year. We wouldn't dream of eating turkeys. Come Christmas, we all run around saying, gotta have a turkey, must have a turkey, <laughs> have a turkey, turkey. Christmas wouldn't be Christmas without turkeys. <laughs> Mind you, it's just as well we eat turkeys, otherwise the world would be up to its bum in them. <laughs> Cards. I mean, we all send each other cards, Christmas cards. You know, the screwiest Christmas card I've got this year, which wishes me peace and prosperity, comes from Bomber Command. <laughs> well, Christmas is a kind of period of giving and receiving presents. Now, I don't know about you, but I generally get soap or bath salts or shampoo, shaving cream, handkerchiefs, socks, cigarettes books and booze. I have a clearly defined picture of how my friends see me. <laughs> There's a thing that when you, when you think of the Christmas period, the 12 days of Christmas, this nation consumes more alcohol in the 12 days than any normal month. Now this, this is, why do we drink alcohol? If you met somebody from, say from outer space who knew nothing about alcohol, and you said, here, have a glass of booze. And he said, why? He said, well, drink it. And he tasted it. He said, Luck! Tastes awful. Well, drink it. But why? It'll make you feel good. It'll make you happy. Witty, bright, sharp. Anything else? Yes. It'll make you sad. <laughs> makes you depressed. It makes you cry. It gives you headaches. It makes you bad tempered. It makes you want to shoot your wife. <laughs> Makes you miss. <laughs> Gives you double vision, shakes, destroys your stomach lining, kills your liver, causes hardening of the arteries, and total destruction of the brain cells. Why do you drink it? For pleasure. What else? <laughs> you know what? Christmas is... Uh, Christmas... The noise of the music. All the Christmas music is so noisy. It's the, the church bells are ringing. Church bells at eventide. Angel bells, jingle bells, sleigh bells. Hear the angel trumpet sound. Hark the herald angels sing. Shout hallelujah, ye choirs of heaven. Ding dong merrily on high. <laughs> Blow trumpeter, the babe is born. You think with all that noise going on when he was born, those three wise men wouldn't have needed a star. <laughs> you say, God, listen, that's where it is. Forget about the stars. That's the noise. <laughs> and the one I heard, that little drummer boy. His little drum. Vroom, vroom, vroom. You, can you see the virgin in the stable? And all the din from heaven has stopped. The choirs and the trumpets heavenly bells 
she's just got a newborn babe to sleep. And who comes marching up the road? <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Shall I play to him upon my drum? Boom, boom. No! <laughs> Joseph, tell that kid to stick that drum up his bum! <laughs> And have you thought what well, we ask children to believe in a Christmas? I mean, I, I'm Irish, and I know that we Irish are superstitious. I mean, even our leprechauns are superstitious. <laughs> we actually ask our children to believe in an enormously fat, red-faced, 1,600-year-old man who, to make himself less conspicuous, because he doesn't wish to be seen by the children, dresses in a bright red suit with white fur edgings, black shiny boots, and a big hat with a bell. And for 364 days of the year, he lives in the North Pole with lots of elves, gnomes, and fairies. <laughs> Whose total vocabulary seems to consist of ho, ho, ho. <laughs> My name is Sandy Claus. Would you like to sit on my knee? And for the rest of the year, we're telling them not to talk to strangers. <laughs> and not only that, but we tell them that when he leaves the North Pole on Christmas Eve to bring us our presents, his means of transport is a sleigh drawn by reindeer who fly. <laughs> guided by one whose nose is so bright that it equals the wattage of an anti-aircraft searchlight. <laughs> and then when he gets here, he manages to break into 17 million homes. <laughs> Down the chimney. The chimney. Every house has doors, windows. Surely that is the easiest way to get into a house, open the door. Even a simpleton would know that. But not Father Christmas. <laughs> this silly fat fart has to come down. <laughs> you, you look at the facts. In Europe alone, there are nearly 150 million homes. And he goes through the lot in eight hours. <laughs> That means he lands on your roof, gets down your chimney, dumps the present, and is out in one five thousandth of a second. <laughs> Are you surprised nobody sees him? <laughs> What's that red blur? Oh, look. <laughs> and in each house, he has a mince pie and a glass of sherry. <laughs> that means that he eats three ton of mince pie. <laughs> and drinks nearly a million gallons of sherry. <laughs> and then we don't see him for another year. Are you surprised? <laughs> Actually, if, if it appears that I am being cynical about Father Christmas, <laughs> I don't really wish to give that. Because I, I really am. I'm one of the few adults who does believe in Santa Claus. <laughs> I do. I also believe that money grows on trees, <laughs> that there are fairies in the bottom of the garden, and that Margaret Thatcher is all hot. <laughs> I also believe that we have some sketches to show you. Good Lord. Yes. Hmm? Well, let's see what we can bag for the Christmas dinner, eh? Oh, good idea, yes. El Presidente that El Christmas dinner is served. I have a gift for El Presidente. A Christmas stuffing that will make him go boom. This way, my little cactus flower. Now eat. But of course. Oh, what a magnificent turkey. <laughs> Delicious. Exquisite. So full of Goodness, but can I, El Presidente, eat 
while the poor peasants starve? No, no, I cannot. This turkey shall be my gift to them. Hey, peasant. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's just what I need. You are clever. My God, Sergeant, Christmas Day. What is this all about? What are we all doing here? Us here, Germans over there, French over there. Belgium, uh, the Italians. What is this nationalistic madness? Listen, sir. It's Jerry singing. Alles ein Samba, nur das Traute. That's not bad. Older in Lockigan Hall. in him, Your marks for the German <laughs> from the United Kingdom. One of the most difficult things to do over this Christmas period regarding children's presents is to buy a present that actually fosters the spirit of peace and goodwill. I mean, you go into a toy shop, you see toys like the tank, battleship. Doom Watch, Atomic War, Holocaust. And I'll tell you what I hate most is when a, t when a child especially asks Father Christmas for one specific toy. And you, the parent, go out and you buy it. And you bring it back and you watch him open it with great joy in his face. And there are no batteries in it. <laughs> and you tear the box to pieces looking for batteries. And there, the bottom of the box, written on a little piece of paper, in the box, says, no batteries supplied. <laughs> and you try to get out of this by, by explaining to your child that Father Christmas has a tremendous amount to do. He's very busy, and he's got all those homes to go to, and he's old, and sometimes he forgets. You say, and the little thing? <laughs> and you say, but, 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 I mean, you do have other presents. You, why don't you play with your nice, nice big toy car that you've got in? That I can't. <laughs> why can't you play with that? Because that doesn't have any bloody battery, <laughs> 
<laughs> you come across something like uh, it says unbreakable toy. Unbreakable. That is a direct challenge to any child. <laughs> He's not going to play with it. He's going to try and smash it. He will spend hours of endeavor and total destruction. And the toy at the end of the day is totally intact. The dog is dead. <laughs> Mother-in-law is in hospital with major concussion. The house is gone. But the toy does not have a mark. How toys change. I mean, years ago, dolls were dolls. Those girls' dolls, they used to just sit there like idiots. <laughs> Sometimes they closed their eyes, but that was due to a big lead lump at the back of their eyeball. <laughs> Nowadays, toys, dolls, they walk, they talk, they cry, they giggle, they grow hair, they eat food, they're, they, they're even toilet trained. <laughs> There's a new one on the market now that refuses to go to sleep. It wails until it is picked up, hugged, and kissed. <laughs> What's it going to be like in ten years' time? I visualize myself spending the whole of Christmas pulling Action Man off Cindy Dog. <laughs> there's there's, there's a, a change in attitudes. Action Man. I mean, that actually is a, is a doll for boys. Action Man. He's daring. He's courageous. He's an astronaut. He's a young junk junk. <laughs> <laughs> He's a jungle fighter. He's a master of the martial arts. He's a marksman. He's an expert knife thrower. Skin diver. Free fall expert. There is nothing Action Man cannot do. There's one thing he can't do. He can't dress himself. <laughs> you know, yesterday morning I spent two hours trying to get that idiot into a rubber suit. <laughs> Daddy, I can't get Action Man into his diving suit. All right, I'll do it. Two hours. You know what I hate most about him? It's that lifeless expression. And no matter what I did to him, I twisted his arm, <laughs> his left leg over his right shoulder. I had his head turned a full 180 degrees. I had his back bent, his head looking through his legs, over his belly, wondering where his head was gone. Not a whimper! Finally, after two hours, I got him dressed. Mind you, he looked like a camp cross a motor. <laughs> and where was my son when I was doing all this? He was out felling trees with the unbreakable toy. <laughs> I was listening. A couple, yeah, I was listening to a couple of children, a few children, a few years ago, talking about Christmas. And one said, well, "What do you do, Christmas?" A little Catholic boy. And he said, "Well, I, I get up and, and I and, and I see my stocking." And, and I have a look at all the presents in the stocking. And then Daddy comes in and we, we, we hug each other and we say Happy Christmas. And my sister comes in and we hug her and we Happy Christmas. And, and then Mummy comes in and we kiss Mummy. And, and then we go down and we look at the Christmas tree and, and all the presents underneath. And before we open it, we all go off to Mass and we thank Jesus for being born, for giving us all the presents. And then we come back and, and, and all the presents. And Daddy says, You can open your presents. And we, and we all, we do open the presents. <laughs> And he said to the little Protestant boy, he said, well, what do you do on, on Christmas Day? He said, I get, I get out the stockings, and I get the stockings, and I open them, and, and, and we don't go to church because we're Protestants. And, <laughs> and then we open all the presents, and I open I have toys, I have toys all over the place. I love toys, I love toys. He said, the little Jewish boy, he said, what do you do? He said, uh, well, my daddy and I, we go down to our toy factory, and we look at all the empty shelves. <laughs> And we sing two choruses of Don't We Have a Friend in Jesus and then we go to Menorca. <laughs> you know, my darling, in this light you don't look a day over 14. 
I'm not. <laughs> Christmas. Um, Christmas. Uh, Christmas rabbit. Oh, very good. Hat. Hat. Uh, Christmas hat. Mom. Um, uh, uh, Bigger, Hatter. 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 Uh, the writer fellow, Alice. Uh, uh, Alice. Uh, uh, it's coming. Uh, Lewis Carroll. Uh, Christmas Lewis. Christmas Carol. Oh, yes, Christmas. I thought you never get it. Well, I said, I said, Christmas Lewis. Oh, my lady. Oh, my lady is carrying a pot. I say, let him act it out. Come on, come on. How many words? How many words, John? Is it a play? Oh. Say it. Say it. Say it. Right. Um, first word. Yes. Little one. There. There. First word. Second word. Oh, dear. Um, drinking. Drinking. Oh, uh, drunk. Drunk. Lovely. Like drunk. Lotto. Lotto. Uh, like what? Um, uh, uh, shorter. Uh, lotto. Lotto. Uh, um, housey, housey. Uh, uh, shorter. Sh house. House. The house. The house. Third one. Third one. Yes, it's pretty good. Tongue. Tongue. Scrooge. Serpent. 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 Like a snake. More. Hearing. Like a sound. Like a snake. Serpent sound. Hiss. 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 Shorter than that. Is. Is. The house. House is. House is. The house is. The house house is. The 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 house is. Good evening. <laughs> is this where the wife swapping party is? Certainly is. Bring her in, gentlemen.
been a remarkable change in attitudes. Um, for example, eating. I mean, years ago, people used to enjoy food. People would say, eat your food. It's good for you. Nowadays, food has some, somehow suddenly become unhealthy. It's bad for you. It has things like cholesterol, carbohydrates, words we never heard of. And all the time, at the back of the mind, there's a part of them thinking, oh, I'd love to eat that food. <laughs> the other part is saying, no, you can't eat it. You mustn't eat it. And they go to bed at night. And they don't have good Freudian dreams, but snakes, <laughs> spiders, Shocks. They dream about apple pie <laughs> covered in cream with legs dancing. Eat me. Hello. <laughs> I'm lovely. Hello. They have nightmares and wake up. Ah, he's got a nightmare about that apple pie. <laughs> Everywhere you go nowadays, people are talking about I lost four pounds. I lost three pounds, I lost eight pounds, I lost 16 pounds. I read about a woman the other day who lost 18 stone. Now, one of the first lessons I ever learned regarding mathematics is that matter is matter. It can change its shape, but it doesn't go anywhere. And every time I hear all these people saying, I've lost this weight, I've lost that, I think, where is all this fat? <laughs> where is it? Where did they keep it? <laughs> In the drawer upstairs, it's my fat in there. <laughs> What's in the cupboard? Don't go in there. That's where I have fat in. It's in black plastic bags underneath the stairs. Every Wednesday at three o'clock in the morning. Who's there? We're the fat collector. <laughs> and then I think to myself, no, hang on a second. It can't be because every time I hear somebody say I've lost three pounds, I hear somebody else say. I put on three pounds. And I think to myself, it's just a one lump of fat that's going through humanity. <laughs> it's awful, awful, calorie. I mean, when we drink, people tell us. I mean, I am quite convinced, I really am, I'm quite convinced that probably in about 20 or 30 years' time, when you buy food, it will have a health warning on it. <laughs> food is dangerous to your health. <clears throat> They'll do it with booze. It'll be on booze, health warning. Because they tell us about the calories of alcohol. They tell me that if I have two glasses of wine, my calorie intake is so large that to burn off that energy, I should play a game of golf. I have given up drinking red wine because I don't like golf. I don't want to play it. <laughs> if I have seven gin and tonics, I should run four miles. Can you imagine having seven gin and tonics? I just fall around We smokers now are what I would call the modern day leper. <laughs> yeah, we have we are confined to areas. We're not allowed to mix the clean people. When I mean, you get on a train nowadays, there used to be non-smoking compartments on trains. Now, you have smoking compartments. Two. <laughs> you ever notice where they are? One up the front, one down the back. <laughs> Has anybody here ever heard of a train having an accident from the middle? <laughs> He died, you know, he's a smoker. No, oh, smoking killed him. No, he's sitting in the front of a train and running to a wall. <laughs> you get on an aeroplane. I mean, I used to fly. When I fly, when I... people used to say, have a nice flight. Nowadays, they say, the first thing they say, you smoke? Yes. Smoking is confined to the air of the left-hand side of the plane. And you go down there. You sit there, smoking. And there's a non-smoking area over there. It's two feet away from it. There's a fellow sitting there. And he thinks he's in a healthier area. <laughs> I 
go to the cinema. The first thing they do when I go into the cinema. Do you smoke? Yes. The smoking area is on the right-hand side of the cinema. I walk, and they put a torch on you. You're lit up and the whole of the cinema is looking. Look at it. It's dead smoke. <laughs> It's the whole thing of, of the rule, the message, the note. I mean, when you, when you think about what is bad for us, or what the government think what is bad for us, smoking, drinking, excess eating. Now, in years to come, they're going to start worrying about the population explosion. There's too many people. But they won't tell you not to screw. <laughs> Because that'll get you out of office. <laughs> They'll start telling you little things like, are you aware of the damage that the heart is under during the climax of the act of love? <laughs> They're already starting. I read the other day that it is far safer for a man to have sex with his wife than his mistress. <laughs> <laughs> and people will start to think about it. The line of it, you know, well, not the line of I honestly believe in years to come when you buy a contraceptive, it will have a health warning on it. <laughs> Sex can be dangerous to your health. Her Majesty's government wishes to inform you. Written in little letters in the rubber. And you'll watch that warning grow before your eyes. What all this has got to do with Christmas, I have no idea. The <laughs> thing about Christmas is that people always bring religion into it. <laughs> and we're no different. Mm. Bordeaux. <laughs> La Tour Saint-Simon. No. was magnificent. And now, for my side of the bargain. <laughs> Happiness is a cigar called Baptist. can't stop thinking about sex every second of the day morning noon and, and night just sex 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 but but I'm, I'm frightened to do it because when I was young someone told me that excessive indulgence in pleasures of the flesh made you go deaf <laughs> I wonder could you speak up please
and all because the lady love looked at me. prayer that you will hear continually whispered right throughout Christmas holidays are please, please, please God do not let the television break down. <laughs> you know one of the things I like about Christmas viewing that it actually gives me a chance to see the movies that I missed when they were shown last year. The thing about Christmas television is that it's, it's all recorded, taped, edited, ready for transmission. If you were to walk into any television station over the Christmas, it, it'll be totally empty. I mean, you don't actually imagine that when you watched the Queen's speech yesterday that she, it was transmitted live. You don't actually imagine that she left her lunch, took her paper hat off, <laughs> wiped the gravy from her chin run down the corridor saying, I'll be back in a moment. <laughs> Bagsy, the wishy bowl. <laughs> Philip, don't feed the dogs at the table. <laughs> it's not like that. To be honest, even I'm not here now. <laughs> I mean, you're sitting at home thinking, what's that idiot talking about? Of course he's here. I'm not. You might think I am, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm like you, I'm at home, watching television. <laughs> the only difference is that you're watching this show and I'm watching the other side. <laughs> well, if you're thinking of changing over, don't bother, it's rubbish. <laughs> as a matter of fact, it's so bad that the people who are in it are at home now watching this show. <laughs> and they're thinking of turning over to the BBC too. King singers. Oh, oh, I like the King singers. I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll, I'll go off and watch the King singers. And you stay tuned to the show, and we'll, we'll show you some sketches. Out, out, damn spot, out! I say. I said out. <laughs> We must inspect this cart. <laughs> you British fools, always you are trying to escape. But always we are finding always you. Always you are. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, there is no way the wool you are pulling over our eyes. <laughs> Rouse, open the gate. that song? It is an ancient Lebanese love song which tells of the glories of a man's chest. Oh. <laughs> what does that mean? It is an old erotic poem from Jordan and it tells of the glories of a man's stomach.
Before I go, there's one last thought. We are but five days from 1980. And that means that there are only 307 more shopping days to next Christmas. <laughs> Good night. Thank you. And may your feet go with you. <laughs>